Good evening, Cherries fans, and welcome to this special preview show here on Up the Cherries in all departments. We all know who we're playing tomorrow. But before we do discuss the game, here's a little bit from our sponsors, Dental on the Banks. To find out what they can do for you, visit dentalonthebanks.co.uk. So, for this special preview, I have got the two Harrisons with me. I've got Matt to my side. How you doing, mate? Yeah, not bad, thanks. How you doing? Good. Yeah, all good, mate. All good. And just down below, I've got Sam. How you doing, Sam? I'm good, mate. How you doing? Yeah, all good. And looking forward to this game. Um, so... Of course, when the fixture list was released, it was for me the first game that I looked for was when are we playing that lot down the M27? And that day's upon us. Um, was there any games that you really looked at and thought, oh, you know, I, I prefer that game over this? Um, well, obviously, one of the first ones I looked for was, was Newcastle. Um, yeah. Because obviously for the uh, connection, um, and yeah, Saints was uh, always another one that I looked for. Um, and then you kind of look for the big clubs, don't you? When you're playing the big four, you know what kind of uh, time of the season are you playing them? Um, you kind of hope they're not all clustered at the end of the season, uh, just in case you're you know fighting for points. So it's always quite uh, good to see when you're playing the big boys. Um, but yeah, Southampton's definitely one of the uh, fixtures uh, to look out for. What about yourself, Sam? That's it. Obviously, the big guns, uh, Newcastle with the connection of Eddie Howe. And, uh, yeah, the Saints was always going to be one of the first to look at. So, um, the last time we played Southampton was in the FA Cup. Um, it was a quarter-final game. And that was during the COVID period. Um, of course, we played them again beforehand during the COVID period during Operation Restart and we was beaten that time as well so um, they probably got the better of us more recently but they're in quite a bit of trouble would you agree yeah they've, they've not um, had a great great start to this uh, campaign have they um, there's a lot of press talk about the manager as well Um that tomorrow, if they don't get the result, could potentially be his last game. Um, so there's a lot of riding on it for Southampton. There's more riding on it on uh, for them than it is for us at the minute. Um, you know, obviously we know every point we get and every win we get is slightly important, but I think there's more pressure on them tomorrow, which is um, quite handy. Um, so yeah, it's going to be. Uh, I mean, regardless to your position, regardless to how you how you've started. Derby games, you know, are always, you know, a different atmosphere, isn't there? There's, you know, yeah. more kind of in some respects, a little bit like a cup game. Um, so, you know, they'll be up for it tomorrow. You know, we can't under underestimate Saints. Um, I do think they're probably not as strong as they have been previously, um, but we still can't underestimate them. 
do they really care about us? Well, I think that depends on who you ask. Yeah. Um, obviously, the biggest derby day for them is Pompey, and mm. I think that will always be Pompey, um, just because of the historical events that went on, you know, with the uh, with the Dockers back in the day that, you know, I think that will always be, you know, a, a rival, uh, you know, and the biggest rivalry uh, for Saints um, and for Pompey. Um, but, you know, they don't want the little old club from Danny and 27 to beat them, do they? And, um, you know, I mean, if, uh, I mean, the last time we beat Saints, um, uh, I was there at the uh, St. Mary's um, and, and and the crowd, the atmosphere, you know, it, it felt like a derby. And, and yeah. obviously when you get the win, it's it's an even better, better feel. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's going to have a good derby feel about it. <laughs> and... Sam, you know, of course, um, our recent track record against Southampton isn't particularly that good, but this has got a different feel, hasn't it? It definitely has. Obviously, really, uh, only unbeaten team in the last few games in the league now. Um, and yeah, our form says it all really at the moment. And with Southampton's form uh, not being so great, I think we'll be the more relaxed team tomorrow. But I think the main thing is not to get too relaxed and um, play the good football we have been. Get straight out on the attack. And I think, yeah, it will definitely be a very good game. I guess for Southampton fans, they're probably thinking that if they do go down, it could be, well, first time I can remember for, and I'm guessing it's a long, long, long time that we have been above them in a league. We could be at the end of this season um, because it's not looking good for them. They are in all sorts of trouble. Um, we've had a look at their squad. We'll go through that in a bit more detail as well in a second. But um, personally, I, I think they're going to go down. You know, from where I'm sat at the moment, I think that they're going to go down. And this could be the last game where they could view us as little old Bournemouth because with the investment that might be coming in during the tr January transfer window, might not be little old Bournemouth for much longer. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good point. I mean, it's a long way to go, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's no good um, getting carried away um, because, you know, the, I mean, like I was saying about the St. Mary's game where we beat him 3 0, you know, we're all chanting, mind the gap, mind the gap, Southampton. And it was eventually us that went down. So mm -hmm. there's a long way to go. Um, both both clubs have got a lot of points to fight for. Um, obviously, as it stands, you know, we're looking in a healthier position. Um, but yeah, I mean, for, for, for Saints at the moment, it, it isn't looking looking promising and it depends if they do make a managerial change it does depend on who they bring in as well yeah that can have a you know we always know when managers change sometimes it does have a big impact on the side i mean look what's happened to us um obviously with gary o'neill coming in um so you know it might have that kind of effect on him in which case they're bounced back um so it's, I mean, it's a little bit early days to say for us to be talking about will we be in a higher division than them next year because both clubs have still got plenty to do in a very difficult league. Yeah, I definitely. definitely. Agree with that. So let's have a little look at their squad as well. So, of course, they were up against West Ham on Sunday. And um, they appeared to have played a 4-3-3. Now, I understand that Bella Kotchap, who is one of the central defenders, is out for this game. So that's, you know, not partic particularly a bad situation because he does appear to be one of the stronger players in the squad. Um, but they've got James Ward-Prowse. They've got Ashley Maitland-Niles, um, Walker-Peters as well at the back. So there is some talent, but there's nothing that really scares me. Um, let's start off with the goalkeeper, uh, Bazunu. Um, last season, he was on loan at their friends a little bit further down the M27 um, at Fratton Park. Um, 
And of course, you know, he did quite a good job there. Yeah, he's, he had a good impact down there, didn't he? And um, kind of similar to what happened to Aaron Ramsdale with us. He um, had a good loan spell and it looks like he's made that number one spot his own this season. Um, like we were saying a little earlier, when we were up at Liverpool and having a few beers before the game, we were watching the United Saints game, weren't we? Yeah. Um, in one of the pubs there and, and he made some fantastic saves I think he made like a triple save or something ridiculous like that mm-hmm. um, and I'd never heard of him before and then that's when I look, we know we looked him up and realised that he'd uh, been on loan at Pompey and that and he's a young young keeper as well I mean he's only 21 years of age um, Republic of Ireland goalkeeper um, obviously looks like he's got a very very bright future ahead of him um, and he must be doing well. I mean, to to keep someone like Alex McCarthy out, you know, he's he's played well for Saints when he was in 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 the uh, number one spot last season um, and time before that. Um, so obviously he's keeping him out. Um, and also they've got an experienced keeper in Willie Carbarero, um, who's not made their Premier League twenty five, but he's still in and in and around the uh, the camp. And obviously. Training with those two keepers every day is obviously not doing him any harm. So he's he's probably learning bags loads off them every day. So I, I think their goalkeeper's got a lot lot of potential for and a very course, good future. Vince Bartram will also be teaching them, and that as well. Yeah, Mister Bartram. Yeah, he he will be uh, involved. Yeah. So learning from one of the best, one of the best. Um, let's look though at um their defense because last time out Carl Wal- uh, Walker pieces um Bellicott chap Salisu and Peroud um now Bellicott chap is one that jumped out to me um he has looked a very very good defender um I believe he's German isn't he who sorry Bella Kotchap, Armel yeah. Bella Kotchap. Yeah, another um, another youngster as well. I think he's only about 20, 21. 20 years old, yeah. 20 years old. Um, quite a tall defender, but um, has done very, very well there. Um, but personally, that defence, you know, doesn't... And considering he's going to be out, that... If I was a Southampton fan, that wouldn't fill me with much confidence. Um, no, I mean, like you say, he's 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 big, he's strong, um, quite athletic as well, from what I can tell. I mean, like I said, I've only seen a couple of Saints games this season on the telly. Yeah. Um, you know, so when you're dealing with someone as skillful as Solanke, or you could be dealing with someone who who can hold the ball up like like a key for more. He's the he's the kind of defender you'd you definitely want in your side. Um, but then again, there is a few other defenders in there as well that could come in and do a job. Um, I forget his name now. He's been there a few years. Um, a Polish guy. Um, don't know if you. The name two... will ring a bell. Um... <laughs> Jan, somebody is it? Jan. Um, where's number 35 for him? I know that much, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, you know, he can come in and do a job, you know, bags full of experience. Um, yes. so, um, Jan sorry, Jan Begnarak. that's him, that's him, yeah, him. So, you know, he's been around the, the club for a long time there, so you know, there's 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 obviously people that will fill those those voids, but then again, you know, I, I would expect. Bournemouth to uh, score against that defence. Yeah, he's he's currently on loan at Aston Villa, and he will not be returning because he'd come out and said he's joined a bigger club. Just see so you know. Oh, is that what he's doing? Well, so yeah. what I've just said there's complete rubbish. Then <laughs> <laughs> I only knew that because I, I my uh... they got a Brazilian defender as well, haven't they? Um, yeah. I can't even remember his name. Um, they've got a Brazilian defender as well, um, centre back. So I mean there's there'd be somebody to fill in, but you know, I would expect I would expect Bournemouth to uh you know, I think Bournemouth have probably come up a strong against now, especially with with um Bella what's his name? 
Bella Kotchap. That's him. <laughs> Bella Kotchap. Uh, um, you know, you would expect that Bournemouth will come up against stronger defence mm-hmm. this season. So, um, yeah, I don't think the defence is going to cause us many problems. Right. Um, maybe the wing, you know, the, the right back. Walker Peters, you know, he's a good he's a good defender, good at getting forward as well. So that can cause us some problems. But I think in terms of centre backs, um I think the likes of Solanke should uh should um have a decent game against them Lamar. Yeah, definitely. Um believe it or not, the chap that uh the Brazilian defender is uh called Lianco. Um, which, to be honest, when you go to Southampton normally, you go for IKEA, um, and it sounds a bit like that, doesn't it, Lianco? <laughs> that piss them all off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Lianco. Uh, it does sound like a superstore. Um, <laughs> let's look at this midfield then. Um, of course, James Ward Prowse. Ashley Maitland Niles, and I'm always going to struggle saying this. Elia Nusi. Have I said that right or have I butchered it? About right, I would say. About right. Uh, that's the um, Norwegian player, isn't it? Um, I believe you're right. Yes. Yes. Mohamed Elia Nusi. Yeah. Um... Obviously, the, the the big standout names, obviously Ward Prowse. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we I think we were having a debate um, on the free for all the other night, um, and I think I said something. And I think Manny made made his point, um, but for me, um, he's a good player, and we were talking about whether we would select him for the England squad. Yeah. Um, He's a good player. We know that he's dangerous from set pieces. Um, so, obviously, it's important. Obviously, I'm sure Gary O'Neill was telling the lads tomorrow, try and not give those free kicks away in range of, you know, Ward Prowse because, you know, what could be a game where we're dominating? You know, it's this, it's the type of game we could end up losing 1-0 if we give away a silly set piece. So, um, you know, we've got to be very cautious of that tomorrow. Um, obviously, he can deliver a ball well from the corner as well. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's going to be um, moments that uh, I'm sure we'll be uh, a little bit concerned off if uh, Ward Prowse is placing the ball down within sort mm-hmm. of like twenty to 30, 30 yards from goal, and uh, yeah, we could be uh, you know uh, a little bit uh, in trouble if uh, he manages to deliver a decent one like he normally does. Um, I mean, the rest of the midfield, obviously, you know, you've got the experienced hats and, you know, you've got your Nathan Redmonds and your Theo Walcotts, um, yeah. players like that. Um, but then, I mean, standout one for me, um, other than Ward Prowse, is I, I've always liked Stuart Armstrong. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always thought he's a decent player. I mean, even when I've seen him play for Scotland, you know, I think he's a decent player, pops up with a decent goal as well. Um, not scared to shoot, is he? So, I mean, the midfield... You know, like in, in most football matches, that's where the battle's got to be won. Um, and I think, you know, the likes of Lerma and Cook, you know, they should be starting tomorrow. Um, should be able to break them down. They're going to have a bit of a trickier one in the midfield. But, um, yeah. Personally, I think we've got a better midfield than Southampton. And... Um, I would probably still play the same way as we did, you know, going into that Fulham game. Um, yeah, 100%. I think yeah. Billin, Lerma and Cook in the centre, um, you know, should be able to nullify maitland Nars quite easily. Then one of those can peel off and help. Um, and it would be Marcus Tavernier who would be down that side you know, coming up against Ward-Prowse a lot of the time. Um, of course, Adam Smith if he does exactly the same as what he did against Fulham, um, would be also trying to keep James Ward-Prowse quiet if he does break through. Um, And just very quickly on that, do you think he will do what he did against Fulham? um, Or do you think he'll bring Zamora back in? He 
he didn't have Zamora playing against Leicester, did he? No. Um, so I think, you know, it's kind of a formula that's working at the minute. I mean, I like Zamora. I think I think the kid yeah. is an absolutely fantastic player. Um, you know, he's one that you want to make sure you can keep at the club for as long as possible. Um, mm-hmm. Because there will be people that, would, that will be looking at him. Um, and, you know, I love his athleticism, how he gets forward. <clears throat> how he gets forward. Um you know, he's a great, great player. But I think at the moment, with the results we've been having, obviously we've had a win and a, and a draw. Um, you know, I would probably keep to the same formula for the moment. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, Fredericks, though, I mean, he's done no harm. as he? He's had a couple of good games. Yep. Um, and he's fantastic at getting forward and getting into the box, you know. So, yeah, for me at the moment, um, I, I, I would definitely go with the same back line as, as we have done the previous two games. It's quite funny football, really, because, you know, Fredericks was the one that I was least excited about. Of our yeah, I, mean, I, I, I spoke to, I mean, I know a few West Ham fans and, you know, I had a couple of messages from them when we first signed him. We were sort of like, you're signing Fredericks, question mark, question mark, or like a laughed out loud emoji. And I spoke to one of the lads and they said, Jay, yeah, he's great at great at pace but he's got no defensive skills about him and all this and you know I, I can't see he's really put much of a foot wrong um, for us so long may that continue but um, yeah I, 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 you've got to carry on with the the same I, I think he will start the same team tomorrow to be honest Yeah, um, it will be nice to see you know, you know while we're just on our side at the moment it'd be Nice to see, uh, maybe you know, if if we can, if the game's going to plan, you know, maybe Rothwell for maybe fifteen minutes, you know, getting some game time. Be, be nice to see him because I think he's going to be very exciting. Um, so yeah, I mean, other than maybe introducing, you know, the likes of Rothwell at some point, I, I think he will probably keep to the same plan. And with regards to Rothwell, who do you think he would replace in that centre three? Or would he go onto the wings? I mean, yeah, I mean, he, he can do that. I mean, I, I would like to see from what I've seen of him at Blackburn, um, mm. you know, watching, you know, I know it's different when you're watching it. On telly, but the times he he played <laughs> he played uh, against us and and we watched him, you know, on on the telly. I would say more getting forward, so maybe kind of possibly in that kind of billing role. Yeah, yeah, um, is where I'd probably like to see him. Um, you know, and it gives gives us a different option. Um, you know, if if you know if billing isn't being as effective in that role. You know, you can always make that change with Rothwell. So it will be interesting to see when he gets introduced where, where he kind of comes on for, or he might come on for a Christie and play wide. Um, You know, it, it will be interesting to see what they do. Mm-hmm. And let's look at Southampton's attacking line because um, Joe Aribo, she Adams and Adam Armstrong. Now, personally, um, she Adams doesn't really concern me at all. Um, Armstrong, you know, is a decent attacking option. Um, Aribo's done quite well, though. Yeah, she Adams, uh, on his day, he does get a couple of goals here and there, but then he has droughts all the time. So, yeah, she Adams, if he's on his day. It's difficult, could happen tomorrow, but I can't see it. Um, yeah, out of those three, there's I'm not really scared of their attack compared to other teams we've played. I think, in some respects, I mean, I you know, we don't watch Southampton you know every week, you know, we don't we don't um really pay attention to Southampton, but I would say if I was a Southampton fan. I'd probably be thinking our strikes, our strike force might be our weakest point. Mm. 
Um, because like you say, Craig, you know, Che Adams <sighs> doesn't really frighten me. Um, I think Meps and Senesi would be uh should be able to deal with him. Um Adam Armstrong, I think he's been a little bit hit and miss, isn't he, since he's been there. Um I think yeah. he did he come from Blackburn as well. So, yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, I think he did, didn't he? Um, so for me, no, I know we're saying this now. And che Adams goes and bangs a hat trick in or something tomorrow, but I, I, I don't think you know, you know, they they can score goals. Um, yeah. You know, some you know if Saints fans are watching this, they'll be saying, "Well, Solanke ain't scored you many goals in the Premier League, but Solanke's got an all round game about him." Yeah. You know, and he's made a lot of assists lately. Um, you know, he's good for our run of play. So, you know, in what he's lacked in goals so far this season, he has made up in other departments. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas I don't think the likes of Che Adams and Adam Armstrong probably are as skillful as Solanke. I might be completely wrong, but, um, you know, I, I, I would definitely, definitely say that their strike force is probably their weakest point. How many goals? Do you know? Does anyone know how many goals they've scored between them? That's what we'll t- we'll tell you. I will just work it out. But the uh, one other player, as well, of course, in the strike force is uh, Siku Mara. Oh yeah, the French well. French striker. Yeah. yeah, he's a very very young player. Um, I believe he's just turned twenty, um, and you know that will be quite. Interesting if he comes off the bench because he come off the bench against West Ham. Now I've had a look at their statistics. West Ham had more shots, but only had four on target. Southampton had eight, but only ten shots in the whole match. So it's difficult, really. To are they? Well, they didn't have much possession, really, as well. They were down on the possession. Um, I'm just trying to get those figures, actually. Um, five or... goals between the three that started last week. Five yeah. goals between the five three. Five goals between the three that started up front. Mm. And who were the three? Adam. Who were the three? So it's G. Adams, Adam Armstrong and Joe Arebe. They've right. got five That's... goals between each other. So, nine, ten games, it's not a lot really, is it? No. It's not really much to be worried about, to be fair. Um, but, you know, of course, there is this um, Mara as well. Um, he's he's come off the bench six times. You know, he probably is going to be looking for a day, you know, a goal. His first goal, I believe, for the club, if he does get one. But, um, you know, that would concern me. That would concern me because I think he would be thinking to try and make his mark against a team that's local. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, when you're a striker in his position, you're coming off the bench mm. quite frequently. I think a, a goal against any team is going to help your mm-hmm. your confidence and your chances of uh, getting a start in place. So I think whichever side he's playing against, he's, he's going to be raring for a goal. So, I mean, if he comes on, then... You know, I'd, I'd imagine, you know, just like any other game he's come on for this season, he's going to be raring, raring to grab his first goal. And that's always important for a striker as well. I mean, you know, like um, Lee Bradbury was telling us a few weeks ago, you know, that first goal he scored for Man City was, you know, important. And that's the same for any striker at any club. Whether how long you've been there, how many appearances you've made, you know, it's, it's breaking your duct and... That's what he'll be looking to do if he comes off the bench tomorrow night, just like he has done all season, I'm sure. With regards to what Gary O'Neill is going to be doing for this game, I think he's got to approach it exactly the same way as he did against Fulham that first half. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely uh, agree there. Um, It's... uh... It's a game, you know, the Fulham, the first half, you know, I mean, even though Fulham, I wouldn't say Fulham were out of the game the first half, but we did control parts of that game, um, large parts of it. Um, You know, we are the home side, so we are going to expect to be 
you know, going at them, aren't we? You know, yeah. Um, I, you know, I'd approach this one like differently to the way you'd approach Brentford. You know, I was I was more cautious about approaching them because of their counter attack abilities. Um, but I think you know tomorrow, you know, I think both sides will be all out going for it. I, I really do think that. Tomorrow. And I think that will hopefully expose Southampton at the back and we can take advantage of that because, you know, if we play like we did against Fulham, I think we'll win this game. I think personally Fulham are a better team than Southampton. Yeah, um, I, would, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. All round, all round, actually. I mean, you know, if you compare Fulham and Saints on paper, you know, in each department, you, you probably would rate Fulham as, as, as the stronger side. Um, you know, it, the defence, I mean, uh, Diop, um, who scored yeah. when he was at West Ham. I was talking to a West Ham fan today and I, I didn't realise Diop had gone to uh, Fulham because, I mean, I remember watching him come down uh, uh, was just after um, How dropped Begovic and put Boric mm-hmm. back in. And he had a fantastic game, that Diop for West Ham. And I was surprised he left West Ham, to be honest, because I've, I've, I've rated him. So, you know, you've got him already. Um, and I would say he's probably stronger than, than any of the centre backs that, that Saints have got. Um, yeah. And then, you know, you look in, in the midfield and you just pull out names, you know, and, and, and compare them. And I, and I would say the majority of the Fulham players, you know, are stronger than the Saints midfield. And, you know, then you got someone like Mitrovic, you know, who scored more goals than the Saints front three put together. So, um, yeah, I totally agree with you there. I mean, Fulham, you know, we play against the Saints like we did Fulham, then then we should beat them. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Let's do a little bit of a prediction just to finish the show on. Um, I'm going to stick with my prediction from the other day, which is a 2-1 win. <laughs> um, yeah, 2-1 win. Um, we know what Alex Letizia said. She said a 2-1 win. Go on, guys. Go on then, Sam. You go first. I'm going to say three now. No problem tomorrow. Yeah, I, 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 I was thinking three one to be honest. Um, but um, I'm probably edging more towards Sam's actually because I think if we can get an early goal, rattle them, um, and take control of the game, um, there's no reason why we can't put three past them tomorrow. Yeah. Um, be interesting to hear a Saints fans' view on that, but um, yeah, I'm I'm confident. I'm quietly confident. Um, I was confident against Leicester, even after the first ten minutes. You know, being you know goal goal down within the first ten minutes. At no point did Leicester really worry me. Mm-hmm. Um, making the substitutions, bringing Vardy on, didn't really worry me. Um, I'm not just saying that because we won the game. Um, you'll know, you both know, you were sat next to me. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't worried at all during that game. I, I had that instinct that we would, a bit like I did against, the, you know, when we played Villa at the start of the season. You know, I had that kind of feeling that day that, you know, we would get something. Um, at the moment, I've got that feeling about tomorrow. Um, whereas Saturday, I had that feeling of, uh, you know, we, we could beat these here today, but, you know, we'd take a point. Yeah. Um, tomorrow, I think I'd be disappointed with a point tomorrow, not just because it's Southampton, mm-hmm. but because of what we are coming up against in terms of of quality um, and, and, and the start to the season. Well, how our season has progressed on from from the start. So I'm, I'm going to stick with 3-1. Mm-hmm. Stick with 3-1. Um, no, no, I'm not. I'm going to go 3-0 like Sam. 3-0. Three yeah. now. There we are. Yeah. Well, I'm going to stick with. Well, to be honest, I think it could be a bit more convincing. You know, I could, I could change from this because personally, they don't worry me. They don't worry me at all. They're so <laughs> they're so yeah. tomorrow night when we're on the way back that uh, we're, we're 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 um smiling and not. Thinking, God, I wish I never said that last night. 
But um, yeah, like I say, you know, break down, you know, when you break down the squad, you know, you compare it to our squad, you compare it to Fulham's squad. You know, it does make you think that, you know, we should be okay tomorrow, you know, and we always like the games under the lights. We always like the evening games. We always seem to have a better atmosphere. You know, it's, it's the Derby atmosphere as well that would be there. So, you know, you know, with all, all the majority of the Bournemouth fans, you know, getting behind the, the lads. And I mean, I can see it being a really good night under the lights tomorrow. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I actually just can't wait till tomorrow evening um and i am you know i've never been so confident playing them i've never been so confident so you know touch wood there's nothing nasty that happens that changes that but i think we should be okay last two questions actually um if our predictions come true is Ralph Ralph Hasenhutl staying in the job or is he gone? Um, <clears throat> you're getting closer to the World Cup, aren't you? Yeah. Um, you know, results aren't obviously going their way. Um, if you believe what you read in the press, he's on his last legs anyway. Um, I think the final nail in the coffin would be, you know, if we do beat him three 0 tomorrow, like me and Sam are predicting. Um, you have got to probably say he'd be gone. Mm-hmm. I think he will be sacked. I think that'd be the last straw. Um, you know, but then again, this is a manager that's had, you know, a few heavy defeats before, and Two um, nine nils. It seems to have turned it around. So, but it, you know, is he taking Southampton any further? Um, if anything, they've gone backwards, haven't they, this season? Yeah. Um, so far, so I would probably say he will get the chop. Your next question: Who who would take over? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what names are out there? It's like I've said, you know, for for the Bournemouth job, what what names are out there that excite you at the minute? Sure, nice. You know, Sean Dyche, you know, doesn't, you know, excite me. I'm sure he, he, he's a cracking manager, but, mm. you know, it, it doesn't excite me. Chris Wilder, why would you go for someone that's just been sat by a championship club? Mm. Steve Bruce. Scott yeah. Bigman Parker. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, it looks like um, it looks like um, Michael Carrick's going to be getting the Middlesbrough job now, if you believe what you read this evening. So, <clears throat> it's... um. You know, and he he'd be a young, excited manager. I think that's going to be a probably a real good coup there for for Middlesbrough because um, you know, young, ambitious manager. Um, you know, who who takes over at Saints? Or do they go continental? I think that would be the only route. I, I, yeah. I honestly think that would be the only route. Yeah, I mean, you know. Th- we are lucky that, you know, I suppose in some respects that we've been blessed with Gary O'Neill coming in. Mm. Um, you know, yes, he's known the squad. Yes, he's worked with him for a couple of years. He knows how the players tick, stuff like that, which is obviously giving him a good stepping stone. But, you know, the guy has has picked the team each week. You know, he has got results. Um, so we're very lucky there. I mean, has Southampton got a Gary Neal on the bench there that's going to step up and, you know, one of his coaches now that's going to step up and, and take over from him like, like like Gary's done here? I don't know. It's going to be a tricky one. Um, it's the same if you it's the same if you're Leicester. Mm. You know, you sack Brendan Rodgers. I mean, who, who, do you, who do you bring in? Personally, this is why, you know, I have... And... I was under, you know, we've mentioned it on cherry picking the other night. We've mentioned it on the free for all. I got criticised to high heaven for turning around and saying that all, you know, okay, yeah, all may, might be the wrong word, but former fans who know what they're on about will want Gary O'Neill to stay in the job because, let's be fair, Eddie Howe, you know, was given the job and, you know, look at what he did. He had you know, probably less experience at that point than Gary O'Neill had. Um, a lot of people say it's at a lower level and we're Premier League now. But who are we going to get in? Um, you know, Sean Dyche plays the wrong type of football for us as a starter. You know, 
personally, that's a non-start for me. Chris Wilder, well, he's not done very well at Middlesbrough. He had one fantastic season with Sheffield United. Managed to get him up as well. Um, doesn't excite me because it's not recent. Um, you could say Allardyce, you know, been out of the game for too long. Pardew, you know... No, and of course, Nutson at Bodo Glimt would probably be the only one that I would say, right, okay, you know, he'd be quite interesting. But that doesn't always transpire, like we said the other night, to a Premier League team. Bodo Glimt are in, is it the Swedish Premier League? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, the Swedish Premier Premier League is a completely different ball game to Premier League. Um, we've seen Steven Gerrard go to Villa from Rangers to a fantastic job at Rangers. Um, but has he done a great job at Aston Villa? Not really. Mm-hmm. So... I don't claim the Norwegian, by the way, guys. Sorry. Norwegian. There we are. Norwegian. So, well, to be honest, I don't know... I don't know any other Norwegian sides. Probably know a couple of Swedish sides. There's a, a Norwegian. There's um, a club that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's um, oh, yeah. with. Begins with an M. Is it M O L D E spelled like that? Mold. Yeah. Mold. Right? Mold. M O L D. Yeah. That's that's the one. I, I know. I've heard of them. Um, obviously through Solskjaer. Obviously, mm. yeah. In the press, and obviously he was at that club managing them before he went back to United, wasn't he? And so, yeah. Other than that, I wouldn't have a clue who they were either. But Rosenborg. Oh, were they? Rosenberg. Oh, Rosenberg. Yeah, so Mulder, top of the table, uh, won five games in a row, and uh, Rosenberg a third, and Bodo Glimp a second, I believe. Oh, look at Stato down there. There we are. Well, oh. there we are. I've learned something about the Norwegian Premier League. Tonight, they are um, the only teams you will know. Yeah, the rest of them, you know, would never clue. No, uh, fair enough. Um, <laughs> but that's what that's my point entirely. And you know, they can criticize me till high heaven, you know, carry on criticizing me. But you know, Gary O'Neill is my man, and I'm sure you guys agree with that as well, you know. I do, yeah, I do, but I would carry on with him as caretaker for now. I yeah, that's fair. The name, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I would as well. I mean, rather than put an extra pressure on the guy. Yeah. Um, and plus the Americans are going to want to, you know, review everything. And like we've said this time and time before, um, I, I, I'd be surprised if he gets the job this side of the World Cup. Um, yeah. He might get the job during the World Cup. Um, they might appoint him then. Um, but yeah, um, you know, just full credit to the guy. Yeah, definitely. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it up now, but thank you everybody for joining us. We will give some reaction at some point after the game. Um, probably not on the day of the game. We'll work it out. We'll let you know. We'll put it on Twitter. We'll put it on Facebook and Instagram and you name it. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me again, guys. As always, absolute pleasure to have you back on. And um, yes, hopefully everybody's enjoying the game and coming home with some smiley faces after a three-nil or better win. Actually, wouldn't it be nice if Southampton got beat nine-nil the third time? I'll leave that thought there. But thank you for joining us. Mm-hmm.